Welcome to Kamudanga Farm. My name is Anthony Ndeto and I'm a director of Kamudanga Farm. Kamudanga Farm specializes in aquaculture, uh, which is uh, fish production amongst other fields. In, at Kamudanga, we actually have the whole value chain covered. That means from uh, eggs harvest to hatching to fish production up till plate where the consumer now consumes our fish. And this is our story. The idea of Kamudanga Farm actually came from the stimulus program that the government ran, I think, in the year two, 2006. So we were intending on uh, going into pond farming, but then uh, by chance we discovered about uh, the recirculatory system. That was when the government was uh, providing uh, farmers with, with seed, that is fingerlings, and they were helping farmers to dig ponds and uh, you know they they subsidized quite a bit of what was going on in that program which really introduced aquaculture into kenya as a commercial business system for production which is a intensive way to fish farm more you know more intensive than pond farming so this is now when we picked up interest in fish farming then luckily we got in touch with uh, a dutch program uh, which is called uh, Fotech africa and they were actually in, in the country also trying to spread the gospel about recycling systems. So them and us now actually fit quite well together. And now we worked hand in hand with them to actually develop uh, Kamulanga Farm as a recirculatory system uh, for production. The recycling system is uh, you circulate your water. So for example, we are based in Machakos where we, we are not heavily, you know, uh, we don't have uh, a lot of resources of water because we're, we're in semi-arid area. So with the recycling system, you actually uh, minimize your use of water because use the principle of a swimming pool where you recirculate the water and uh, it's at every point it's being cleaned and uh, you only dispense with maybe like 10% of, of that water per day which we now put into agriculture. So if we were to do uh, pond farming, we probably need millions and millions of uh, liters of water in, in one production cycle. But with the recycling system, since we are recirculating our water, we only use maybe, uh, we only, because we only get rid of 10% of the actual in, initial water we have. So you may find that out of four months, a 50,000 litre tank, we've only, changed, we've only dispensed water of it at that 150,000 litres. So minimise your use of water. With the volumes, like for example, we are based in, say, roughly one acre. And we produce, uh, now we're headed towards production of 100 tonnes a year. And for that kind of production in ponds, you'd actually use over 20 hectares of ponds. So you see, when you talk about 20 hectares of ponds, uh, then you need massive sizes of land, you need loads and loads of water. But since we were able to do it in one acre, it shows that for if you want to go into commercial uh, fish farming and you don't even have the big land to do it on, then your, the recirculatory system is your solution. Here at Kamudanga Farm, we rear tilapia and catfish. Reason being, uh, the temperatures in Machakos and are viable, they are suitable to catfish and uh, tilapia. Because tilapia, catfish and tilapia need uh, temperatures of between 23 to 30 degrees uh, temperature, in the, you know, water temperature. And so Machakos fits right in with that. Like for example, we cannot grow trout here because trout will use will want water below 18 degrees, which we can never achieve here. So this part of Kenya is very suitable 
for those two species of fish. We, with the recirculation system, we have waters because we've got our pH right and we've got all our parameters right. So if you eat our fish and you eat Lake Victoria fish, you will not, you will not tell the difference. Because the water that we, you know, the water parameters that we have on the farm are almost equivalent to what you can find in Lake Victoria. You know, fish is fish. So your water quality of the fish is what determines the taste of fish. If you have the pond system, the best thing to do to get your fish to that quality and taste <clears throat> is you must have a purging tank. A purging tank means that once you remove your fish from the pond, you now put it into clean water in the purging tank for 12 days. Don't feed the fish and let the fish now just, uh, you know, use the water to, to clean itself and get back to the proper fish taste. That way, you find that the pond fish will be tasting as good as the Victoria fish because now you put them in good clean water and you're not feeding them for the last 10 days. And uh, that water has to have the right parameters, you know, the pH is correct, so on and so forth. So once you do that, you, 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 you get now the proper fish taste. Because I know pond fish, they say it tastes a bit muddy, but uh, it's because that pond is, 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 of course, centered on, 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 on the land. Probably you use some water and, and there's still soil seeping through into the pond. So the best way to get rid of that taste, purge your fish, very important. For anybody who wants to get into fish farming as a commercial business, the two basic uh, factors you have to take into place, that is numbers and consistency. Because what, if you stock too few fish, then it means you're, not, you're in the market for a certain period of time, then you're out of market for eight, nine months, and then you're back again, and then out again. So that doesn't help. Secondly, to, you need good stocks in order to make, of course you make more money with the more numbers. And, 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 and it's very, very important to also make sure you're constant in the market. That means if you've got 50 pounds, you need to plan that uh, you're stocking sector A, January, sector B, February, so on and so forth, so that you've got fish production throughout the year. And that means you can harvest every week like we harvest every day. Reason being is that, uh, why it's very important, is that you'll be able to sell your fish at a, at a premium cost. Because now you can target uh, uh, supermarkets, hotels, restaurants, but they will not deal with you unless you can consistently uh, you know, uh, supply them with fish. So you need to take care of numbers and you need to take care of consistency in the market and of course your quality of fish. Once a farmer has met all these standards, like I've talked about, like the water quality and so on and so forth, then there's another step that's very critical to, for the farmer to try to achieve, which is certification. Because like here at Kamodanga Farm, we've been certified by ASO. ASO is the African Organization for Standardization, uh, the regulatory body, which is actually through the AU, and it's recognized in Europe and the whole of Africa, meaning we can trade in Europe and Africa. So that certification is so critical for the farmer because what it does is that it guarantees traceability of the farmer's product. And consumers are now, uh, you know, it's consumers want to know what they are consuming and the source of that uh, product that they are consuming. Because, uh, you know, with all these diseases going around and uh, people using too much pesticide on this, or hormones or that, so on and so forth. Traceability is key. Because to get certification, you have to meet some uh, international standards set by the certification. So like for example, here yeah, we use zero hormones, we use no chemicals, and, and you're able, once you see our, our Ecomark, you're able to know that's our fish. You can come to the farm, you can see how we produce that fish. And basically it puts consumers at ease it makes it easier for you to deal with supermarkets because some supermarkets are now insisting on a certified uh, product. So it will, it will make a big difference to the success of a farm 
as we go forward now for farms to be certified. And the beauty with this with certification is that any farmer is available to any farmer. You don't have to be too big or you can't say you're too small. As long as you meet these uh, parameters that the certification board gives you, then you can get certified. For a startup farmer, for instance, it will be very important to get your numbers correct. And I'll give you an example. Uh, if you stock a thousand fingerlings and you grow them up to 400 grams, uh, that means you'll have 400 kilos out of the thousand. In that 400 kilos, selling price could be anything between 300 to 500. Like for example, we sell at 500 shillings a kilo because you have to find your own market that you're comfortable with and that you've worked out your numbers with and that you understand uh, you know, uh, whether you're on profit line or you're going to go on a loss line. So if you've got your 400 kilos uh, of uh, fish, and assuming you're selling it at uh, 500 shillings, that is uh, 200,000 shillings. To produce that fish uh, to that 400 kilos, you probably have used about 600 kilos of feed at uh, roughly 60,000. So now you're looking at that margin between 200 and 60. But of course, you've got your other costs in between, you know, the labor, so on and so forth. So that's just a quick calculation on uh, the numbers we are discussing. Yeah, you could possibly get 300 bob a kilo, work it out that way. You can probably get 400 bob a kilo, work it that way. Uh, we get 500 kilos, so we would work it that way. Because it depends on how you approach a market how consistent you are, uh, what your market niche is going to be. So it's all, it's calculations by the farmer. So you, you will find successful fish farmers who make money and you'll find other fish farmers who don't make money. It just depends on the approach to, to the strategy and approach to fish farming. For the success of a fish farm, uh, getting good fingerlings, good seed, this is fingerlings, uh, to, as, as your seed is, very, is also very critical because if you get wrong seed which is wrong fingerlings then your results are not going to be successful but if you get good seed that is, it's very critical because then that, that, that means your fish can grow, will grow faster and you'll have a bigger fish which means more kilos for you and uh, in, in, on that note uh, I'll introduce my colleague here Patrick who's our hatchery manager who will now take you through some factors on hatchery production and, and, and what it also means for the farmer. What we are looking at, we are looking at our broodstock tanks. Uh, so within our hatchery we have two broodstock tanks and of course we have others in the, in the farm. So normally our broodstock we put them in the ratio of one is to three. So for every one male we have three females. So the process is very interesting uh, and as, because the water is clear we can be able to follow the process. So each male have its own territory and within the territory we have provided them with the breeding ground where the, the female gets into the, the breeding ground, lay eggs, after laying eggs the male follows, fertilizes the eggs, then the female collects the eggs and incubates them in her mouth. So our job is simple, is to come in into the tanks and collect all the eggs by just holding the fish, each fish by each fish, and you open the mouth and you check for the eggs. So, uh, one thing that is very interesting uh, with tilapia fish farming is that the male fish grow very fast and very big, so they take a shorter time to, to grow, and it is preferable to keep male fish only. So for this, purpose, for, for this reason, uh, we are recommended to sell to farmers, male fish only population, uh, unless the farmer themselves request for the mixed sex. So what we do, uh, there are different ways which you can get male fish population. Uh, other hatcheries do sex reversal. Sex reversal is where you have, uh, you get your, your fries, the, 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 the seeds from the, the broodstock, uh, from your broodstock, then you feed them with the synthetic hormone that converts the sex of the fish from female to male. And these have its own disadvantages. One, it's only 60% accurate. Uh, two, there is an impact of this synthetic hormone to the, to the environment. So from 
these reasons, us as Kamuzanga, we, uh, we do YY technology, which is way much better compared to other, other type of sex reversal. So what we do, we have special males. Uh, these males have the ability to sire males only. So what you need to do is just combine this YY fish, this YY male with any female and you'll get all your young ones to be, to be male. And by this, uh, it ensures that you get natural male tilapia that are only gotten from the process of reproduction, the normal reproduction process. And this uh, help, help, you, help your fingerlings to have aggressive nature in them because they are natural male to the fish, they grow very fast and they take a very short time uh, within your, your production. So in each, in every 10 days we come into these particular tanks, we collect our all males egg from the females and then we take the eggs into uh, to the incubation system where we incubate them and then we rear them to, to the size that we want. After we have collected our eggs, we bring them into this artificial incubator. We use McDonald's jars, this one. So we put the eggs in each of the jar. So normally what you're supposed to make sure is that the eggs are in motion and this is what happens also in the mouth of the mother. So when the eggs are rotating, they get nourishment and they only take five days for them to hatch. Then after hatching, they swim, we call them swim up. They normally play on the top side as, what, as you can see. So as, as they are playing on the top side, they are carried by the water current into the troughs. And within the troughs, the, 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 the fries, they normally have the egg yolk with them. We give them two days for, for them to completely feed on the egg yolk. And now from that point now, they are ready to start feeding and then we remove them from the incubation system into our swim-up system. This is one of our swim-up uh, tanks. So normally the swim-up tank is also a recirculatory system and it is made up of three important units. We have the, black tank, uh, the blue tank unit where we keep the fish. Then we have the sedimentation unit where well, we filter out the solid particles and then we have the most important aspect of this unit which is a trickle tower now where we remove the dissolved oxygen. So uh, what happens first, uh, the efficiency of this system is measured by its ability to remove all the waste within the system. So in each blue tank we have the, 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 the sludge collector. They collect all the solid waste which is the excess food and also the poop of the fish so all that is sucked out and brought to the sedimentation tank where it is filtered out, then pumped through UV light where unwanted microorganisms are removed. Then the water continues to the trickle tower, which is the most important part where all the uh, dissolved waste is removed. Now for fish, it's very important for every farmer to understand that fish excrete ammonia. So if you're going to keep fish, especially you're going to have high densities, you must come up with a way of removing this ammonia from the system, simply because this ammonia is very toxic to your fish. So for us, we use a simple way where the water flows through the, the, the blocks, where we have the bacteria which feeds on this ammonia and convert it into nitrate. And then eventually, after the production period, all this water now, it have a lot of the nitrate which we now use for, for our crop production. Fish stays here for 40 days. They grow from egg size to one gram size. And at that size now they are ready to be sold to the farmers or be taken to the other side of the farm. So if you are selling to the farmers, we sell uh, for our fingerlings, that the one gram size we sell at 10 shillings for the tilapia. And for the catfish, the one gram size we, tell at, we sell at 10 shillings. So from here we are going to the nursery where now the process continues because we, Kamudanga farm, we are involved with the whole value chain of the fish to the plate. So the next step is the nursery. So in the nursery we have 10 tanks, uh, each tank carrying a maximum of 4,000 liters of water. And the system in here is also a recirculatory system. So the capacity of this tank is to carry 100 kilograms of fish. So we bring the fish from the hatchery when they are one gram. Uh, we, we stock each tank with 10,000 and we have our flow to make sure that we have consistency in our supply of fish. Now from the nursery we go to the grow out stage 
uh, where we'll see now how the fish grows to mature size for, for, for the farm. From the nursery, the fish come in the, into the grout and you have to bear with us with the sound. We have uh, air blowers, that's where we are getting the sound from because you have to keep on pumping air in each of the tank. It's very important because in the system we are doing a high stocking density so we have to provide extra oxygen for the fish. So from the nursery the fish come here, they stay here for, for four months, they grow from 50 grams to 500 grams. So we have these circular tanks, each tank carries a, a water capacity of 50,000 liters and we put 6,000 pieces of fish in each tank. And at the end of the four months now we get the fish at 500 grams. So this is the last stage of production and it's a large scale of what we have just seen in the, in the, in the nursery. So to the last stage where we have our purging process which is very important where we will see how we enhance the taste of the fish in the next step that we are going into. We bring our fish to the last stage which we call the purging tank. You remember Tony talked about uh, the purging process where we enhance the taste of the fish. So basically what happens, we put the fish outside in clean water, then we change this water daily and we don't feed the feed. So by that the fish clean out their system. So every feed that is within their system uh, moves, moves out and by that you, you, you get a very tasty fish because there's no other thing that is within the fish uh, uh, but the, the, the flesh of the fish. So this is what we do outside before we take the fish to the market. So at this point, I will take you back to Tony, who will explain to you on the market dynamic and how uh, we access our market so that you can get the fish which ends up in your plate. That has been the farm tour and I believe Patrick has uh, taken you through our production process. Uh, but I think it's also important to let you know what challenges we may have encountered along the way. And uh, basically our challenges have been uh, the cost of power, because as you saw we use a lot of machinery, so power costs in Kenya are very high, uh, in fact punitively high. So, but we're trying to mitigate that by going you know, into solar use. So that's our next step to mitigate uh, the high, high power costs. And secondly, of course, uh, is also the high feed costs. Because aquaculture is not very, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a very big industry in Kenya. And of course, if we have more players, then the cost of feed will come down. And uh, of course, basically, because uh, the re recirculation system is new to this part of our world, is also finding people who have the knowledge of how to run that system. Uh, and so to even mitigate that, we are beginning an aquaculture academy which uh, <clears throat> will train people on use of basic aquaculture but, more, but also focusing on uh, using the recirculation system. But we'll still be training people on how to produce uh, in a pond. Now all said and done, uh, there's also a very important segment that you, we need to talk about which is the marketing part, because this has been the production. Once you pass out through that gate to the fish, now you need to know where you're going to sell it. And marketing is just as important as the production. So we have tried to put our own outlets, because then we move directly from production to consumer. So we are opening our own outlets. We've opened one in Watamu. We've opened one on Gong Road and our outlets, we're calling them everything fish, restaurant and sports bar. And we also, of course, uh, supply some supermarkets, we supply restaurants, we have walk-in customers. So basically we put our market in place, which is very key. But <clears throat> putting in the market in place will depend on the strategy of the producer. So it's very important before you set up your fish farm, you also have to have an idea of how you're going, of where you're going to position yourself in the market. So that you start working on your market, so that you don't wait to grow your fish, and then you start wondering where to take to market. Because once you have fish in the tank, to sustain them, you have to feed them. So if you keep them longer than you need to, it becomes more expensive, which eats into your profit margins. So that's also very critical. There you have it. 
That has been the farm production. Now let me take you to one of our outlets in Nairobi, uh, on Gong Road, where, where our, our outlet is called Everything Fish, restaurant and sports bar, as I mentioned. And we can taste some fish there. We are here in Nairobi, on Gong Road. And uh, what you can see outside there is Everything Fish, restaurant and sports bar. So this is a Kamodanga farm outlet. So what we've decided is to move from production and link up direct to the consumer, where we can guarantee uh, very fresh fish, quality, uh, you know, from down the value chain. Uh, now what we've done here is that we have an aquarium. We bring in light fish, and then you're able to pick out the fish that you want. So you can actually point around that fish, and uh, you know, it's taken out and processed for you. This guarantees that you don't have to worry about are the gills red, you know how people try to tell fresh fish. Because this is as fresh as it can get. And normally here the fish will be less than two days. Uh, you know, because the consumers are coming in to, to pick the fish. Also, you can also pick the fish and it's actually made to you for you on site at everything fish restaurant sports bar. And you can also buy this fish processed and you can take it home with you. So this way, you are sure that you're buying Kamodanga from fish. Because our traceability, since we are certified, is very critical to us. Because, uh, you know, very few people actually brand their fish. So you're not sure where you're, what fish you're buying. Is this fish, what sauce, how has it been produced, and so on and so forth. So here now you're guaranteed you go to a Kamodanga from outlet you're actually getting that Kamodanga from fish as fresh as from water. Because this is now water to pan. Uh, the idea is to expand our uh, you know, numbers of our outlets. So we'd be happy to have you in 200. But also we intend to franchise. This is a model that now we're going to get working. And uh, so that when you, when you come in looking for a franchise, you'll be able to get numbers and know exactly what you're getting into. Because it's very critical that we know we're eating clean fish. Very important. With every uh, outlet we have, everything, fish restaurant and sports bar, all consumers will be guaranteed that this is Kamulanga from fish. Plus, they, there's the traceability of it. They'll be able to know it's produced. How it's produced is produced in a safe way, international safe standards. Basically, that's our story from Kamodanga Farm, where we guarantee you good quality fish. Fish where you can trace its source, and uh, we also guarantee you that it's very fresh. And as you can see, our consumer, our customer here is really enjoying the fish, mm -hmm. and we invite you to come and taste our fish at any point and make this your place to be for fish. We would also like to know what you're doing in your agribusiness, so please share your story.